Coming up with what CNC projects we're gonna make to sell is something we all need to figure out, myself included. So I thought it would be really cool for you to sit next to me and look at what I'm looking at as I scour the internet for trends, for product products that I think will sell well. All right, so the first website we're gonna go to is called Crate and Barrel. If you don't know what Crate and Barrel is, it's a uh, decor brand, a high-end decor brand. And so one thing I like about going to retailers is that uh, they are not going to waste time and money on things that don't sell. So you know they're going to be on top of trends. Some of these stores even set trends. And uh, so we can really kind of dial in what is selling, what isn't selling. So let's search wooden because that is primarily what we're going to, the material we're going to be using on our CNC router and CNC lasers. So let's scroll down here. Uh, and we've got wooden spoons, olive wood, trivet, um, a spreader, olive wood, salt cellar. All right, so for number one, we're going to pick something that's a little unique um, and a little, a little different. Now, I understand that some of these items are going to be uh, – they're going to sell well for Crate and Barrel because they have built a brand name and we may not have that brand name. But again, we're looking at specific characteristics, things that we can emulate and uh, uh, take from it and maybe make it out of a different material or something like that. So I think this is a unique item, something that will a CNC router would do really well, where you couldn't make this uh, traditional woodworking. You, you could, but it would take too long um, and, and be kind of difficult. So this right here is a spoon rest. And I like this right here because it's simple. Uh, we, we can make it out of a hardwood material. Um, it's complex enough to where a CNC would do well. I would use a bowl and tray bit here, and then I would use a quarter inch down cut bit to cut it out. And I probably, there is a, if you look, there's a little bit of a, a round over on the bottom. I'd probably just do that on the router table. You could do that on like a double-sided carve with the CNC, but I found rather than flipping it over and setting up the tool paths and making sure everything lines up, unless you're doing this at like thousands of scale, it's easier just to do it on the router table with a round over bit. The idea I like the most about this is that uh, it's a spoon rest, right? So this is gonna be sitting on a countertop for a kitchen. Uh, you could engrave, whether CNC router or CNC laser, a really cool saying on the bottom here one it could be personalized you could put um, uh, something that you know uh, just brings it up a notch that uh, crate and barrel can't do so that could be a really cool idea i like that as a simple um, project targeted towards um, uh, females or female gifts mother's day gifts would work really well here and personalization has a flat bottom still being able to see it because you're not going to always have a spoon on it right uh so that is number one uh, a spoon rest kitchen spoon rest when you're looking on these websites one thing that you'll see a lot is acacia wood um, that's because acacia wood is uh, a wood that is readily available where these are manufactured so right here this is an acacia wood in my part of the u.s we i don't I can't get acacia wood. It's more of an exotic. But like this olive wood salt salt cellar, I've made that exact one before out of cherry and it looked very, very similar. At the end of the day, I believe that I could use woods that are common in my area and still get these results. So the next store I wanna look at is West Elm. West Elm is another store that's a high-end store. Again, these stores aren't gonna waste time on things that don't sell. We're gonna search wooden again for all their products and uh, see what comes up. Okay, so here is the next item that caught my eye. So this is number two on our list. That's a, that is a, uh, I believe will be a good selling and I actually know for a fact that this one is popular. Basically what it is, it's, it's two wooden chain links. They're a little bit bigger and it looks really cool, but basically if you zoom in on it, it's not that difficult to make. You literally just an outside tool path and an inside tool contour tool path, cut to the depth, Again, on these, I'm depending on how many I'm making, I might go to the router table again. But basically, go over to the table saw or um, the bandsaw, cut one of them in half, 
put them, link them together, and glue one of them back together. Uh, this is a very unique item, and um, I've seen a lot of people selling these and have them for sale. And you can sell them for a lot of money. These are selling for, looks like they're on sale. A set of two of them is 120 bucks. Now, this is on West Elm. Do you think you can get $120 for them yourself? I don't think so. Um, I know I couldn't, but they are selling them for $60 a piece all day long. And you're going to have um, let just round, let's say $5 into materials um, for all of them. You know, maybe two fifty into each one. You could sell them for twenty bucks a piece and make a pretty good profit. But you could sell them for more than that too. Uh, each link, I'm saying. So maybe you sell them for forty. People pay money for crazy things. And honestly, one thing that I've learned is that I'm not my target customer uh, when it comes to making decor items like this. Like I'm not the one that's going to walk in there and buy. Uh, and spend $120 on two rings of wood together. But someone is, otherwise they wouldn't have them for sale and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't see them everywhere. So my point being is just because I'm not buying them or I wouldn't spend the money on it, doesn't mean someone else won't or someone else wouldn't. And so we can't uh, just skip over it and forget about it because this is a good opportunity. One more from West Elm's website that really caught my eye that I think has a, a lot of opportunity that not a lot of people take advantage of, myself included. I'm guilty of this. Um, so this uh, giraffe push toy, this kid's push toy, is totally done on a CNC. Now, some people might be like, well, I can't make those those wheels um, and because this has an axle going through it. But let me tell you, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself as well. The opportunity here is great. This is a one-sided carve. Uh, you round over everything from the edges. You pre-drill on the CNC the holes for the axles. Now, uh, I bet you're thinking, like, how are you going to make those balls, Andy? Like, I'm not. I'm going to buy them. And so I think it's fine to make 90% of an item and then have to buy some items to accompany it and to finish it out. You can see they have a couple wood inlays here. These are actually, that's actually a wood inlay just to add a little bit. And I think it does add some, um, some style to it. But uh, wooden toys, wooden push toys are a big deal um, to a lot of people uh, because they're natural uh, and they want natural uh, toys, you know, for their kids to play with. I think this would be a fantastic um, selling item to the, in the right place to the right people. Um, and it would go over really well. Now, just be careful with kids' toys. Obviously, don't make anything small that can fit in their mouth. When you start making stuff for kids, it kind of opens up, um, you know, a different realm of things. So you got to be careful of those types of things. Um, but I think there's a lot of opportunity here that uh, is, is untapped. All right, so the next website we're going to go to is Harp Design Co. Now, this might be a little weird. Hang with me here because actually Harp... Um, uh, closed their business uh, January 1 of this year. But I made a lot of stuff for them, and uh, that's why I can talk about it now because they're out of business. Before, I had a non-compete, and so I couldn't share it. But they have a very good taste. So their Instagram following here, if you don't know who Harp Design Co. is, uh, they are on um, HGTV Network. They got their start with Chip and Joanna Gaines and Fixer Upper, but now they have some of their own shows. And they didn't go out of business because they were bad at business. They said they, they closed the doors because they just have so many projects going on and they had to consolidate for their family's sake. So I respect that. But we can look at the items that they were selling and get very good inspiration from it. Uh, you can see they almost have 900,000 uh, followers. Uh, they're a very prominent brand. All right. So they've got uh, some holiday items here. This is a hickory serving tray. I, I really like that. Let's make that number four on our list. Uh, this hickory serving tray. They're making it out of hickory. This could be made out of uh, walnut. Could be made out of maple. So a very cool design. This could be marketed at holiday markets, uh, things like that. Kids leave, uh, they got room to leave uh, uh, cookies for Santa, milk for Santa. And then I probably would put like maybe a carrot in this lower one. I think that would look kind of cool. 
uh, to leave out for Santa. But I really like this design. It's a Santa hat, very unique design. This would be made with a bull and tray bit. It's three pockets. And then it would be cut um, on the outside with a, I would use a quarter inch down cut bit. And uh, one of the challenges with this one is, is it's a pretty tall and wide piece. So you'd have to glue a pretty big panel together. Probably you would need 12 inches high, maybe 16 inches uh, by length. Usually doesn't matter because boards usually come in longer sides, but this would require some really wide boards or uh, gluing several boards together to make, make some panels up. All right, so while we're on harp here, I found number five. Uh, here's number five on Harp Design Co. Uh, Instagram page because their website is no longer. Specifically looking at the acorn, the leaf, and the cracker tray. If you've been around my channel for a while, uh, let me know if you notice something. Uh, one, I've made one of these. I'm not gonna tell you which one, but let me know down in the comments which one I made. And uh, it's so crazy that one of my projects from my basement shop um, ended up in Heart Design Co. in this beautiful spread. But it's one of those three trays that I made. I know some of you will know for sure. Uh, but I wanna draw attention to the seasonal trays. Again, I know we just did the Santa one, but look at the acorn. We're gonna, we're gonna stay on this kick because we can. So number five, uh, look at this acorn. You know, this acorn nut tray, like marketed at the right time of the year and getting it in front of the right people. This one's made out of walnut. Uh, again, two tool paths, bowl and tray and a um, outside profile cut with uh, a down cut bit out of probably three quarter inch material. It's a unique serving tray uh, used for the holidays. Uh, Thanksgiving be beautiful as a centerpiece. So I, I think that would be a very... Um, a good selling uh, product. So next, let's go to my personal favorite, which is Pinterest. But as I'm looking at it, I'm looking at these through a lens of, okay, where is the market for this? Uh, just because an item selling well in one place, whether that's in person or online or in Texas or in you know Minnesota, like every market is different. It's very rare to have a product that's gonna do well in every single one of those scenarios because there's just different people, different needs, different budgets. Right away, I found an item that I believe won't sell well. And I think that's just as important to show you as what I think will sell well. So here's a bonus for you. So here's my train of thought on this bathroom soak board, let's call it. It has a specific purpose. It makes people, it makes someone feel something. Uh, it, you know, feel relaxed. Obviously it's engraved, it's kind of personalized. It can be like an, your own thing. The reason I don't think this sells well, this is just my opinion, and the reason I wouldn't make this, is because of who would I sell it to? Well, I would sell it to most people that take baths. This is geared towards a female. Okay, where would I sell it? Now, I picture I'm set up at a market, and I have these setting there. So in, in that setting, in my experience, most people uh, aren't looking to spend money on themselves they're much more likely to spend money on something on someone else. Now, I think the person that would buy this is a dad um, for a mom, uh, whether it's for Mother's Day, whether it's for an anniversary or something like that. But in the setting of a, a market, I'm, there's not many dads, there's not many husbands walking around by themselves in that setting without their wives. And so they really wouldn't buy it in that setting. That's my train of thought. I think it would be a tough sell uh, in most cases. Now, maybe it sells well online because it's a little more discreet. Um, people, maybe they're willing to buy for themselves in that setting, like on Etsy. Um, so maybe that this would, I think this has a better chance to do better online um, than it does in person. That's my train of thought of why item, like what items you know, might not sell well. All right, the next one on our list. I think this one would actually, uh, I think this is a great idea and I think would sell well. And that is uh, these word signs. Uh, people love to put this decor up in their house. These are all made out of MDF. One trick with MDF, if you are making them out of MDF, which is cheap, uh, make them out of three quarter inch MDF. That way they have a little more substantial to them and then uh, seal them with a primer first. Spray them with a primer, sand them, 
uh, down, sand that coat down, and then put a couple finishing coats on it and you'll get very smooth results. Um, so this I think is a great idea. One, it's not a, a big purchase uh, for somebody, you know, maybe $20, $30 on these, but you're going to have a couple dollars into MDF. I believe that's number six on our list uh, are these large uh, words uh, as uh, home decor. Number seven is this dog leash holder. Something that uh, I think is often overlooked, a market that is often overlooked is pets. I just looked it up and people spend an average of $740 a year on their dogs, according to Forbes. So this is a market that people are willing to pull money out of their pocket for. And I really love this design because one, it's a decor piece. Uh, two, it serves as, as a function, right? This wouldn't be nearly as appealing just without the hook on it. But the fact that they put the hook where the tail goes, it just looks cool and it serves the purpose of holding your dog's leash. So I think this would be a very good selling product. And uh, something to, to focus on is, is looking into making products for the dog market because people love their pets. All right, number eight is this electric guitar pick box. I think this is a really cool uh, niche item. Uh, obviously, people that love guitars uh, would love something that has a that's shaped like an electric guitar. And I would actually just use one bit for this product. I would just use a down cut bit and I would I would pocket it with the down cut bit. Probably make this out of cherry uh, or you could make it out of, out of walnut. Let's hit go here and you can actually see this is really cool. Uh, they engrave the front of it. This completely takes it up a notch. Like you, you know what it is when you look at it with uh, just the shape of a guitar. But the fact that they engrave the electric like body of the guitar and strings on it really takes it up a notch. All right, we're still on Pinterest here. And I ran into another one that I believe would sell really well, especially this time of year. Uh, and it's one I actually have files available for. Uh, very similar files, maybe not exact. I think our files are actually a little bit better than this one. But this American flag catch-all tray is a really unique patriotic uh, uh, item. Uh, you can throw your keys in it, your change in it, your wallet in it. And again, uh, it could you could just use a normal tray for that, right? Nothing carved in it, but something somebody that's patriotic. So I think this is a really cool, and um, I know... Uh, uh, we sell a lot of these files, so I don't know if people are selling those products, which we do allow if you, uh, you're you not allowed to sell the file, obviously, but you're allowed to make and sell these items. So I'll actually leave a link if you're interested in making this specific project uh, or one very similar to this, uh, I will leave a link in the description for you. So there's a few different tool paths in here. So the first one is a bowl and tray bit to clear out the pocket. And then next you're gonna to switch to a V bit, probably a 60 degree, 60 degree V groove bit. And you're gonna do the flag details. And then you're gonna to switch to a quarter inch down cut, down cut bit uh, and do the outer profile. So obviously since it's on my website, uh, I think this is a really neat project and would sell well. All right, number 10, it, this might be my favorite on the list. And that are that is personalized house number signs. The reason, I've talked about this in a video before, but the reason I love house number signs is because every single one of them is unique. You're making it for a specific person. So uh, this one's really cool with this duck. And uh, I believe that this is, it's probably not wood, it's probably HDPE or something like that. It'd be really interesting to see exactly what they're making this out of. Uh, but you can make it out of wood and paint it just as well. But they put, they took it up a notch. They put a texture on it, a uh, texturing tool path, and uh, put a duck on it. And uh, I love that each one of these is unique, like I said, and you can customize them. Um, and they're relatively uh, low cost. And, but since they're, each one is really specialized, um, you can get a lot of money for this. So maybe you could sell each one of these uh, depending on the design. But this one, for example, I think I would sell it for probably 150 bucks. Uh, just off the top of my head. I think that's entirely reasonable for something that is very specific. You're only going to design once. Uh, another thing that you can do to speed up the design process is you could make templates. Uh, I know you can do this in vCarve, but you do the outer shape. And so the only thing that you're replacing uh, is the name and the address 
and then everyone probably doesn't want to duck on theirs. So you could change that out as well. But uh, that would give you a heads up and you could do d different shapes, but maybe you had 10 different shapes. And if you really wanted to scale this, you could uh, uh, do that pretty easily with uh, using templates and save a lot of time. So I hope these 10 projects gave you some inspiration or at least gave you some ideas on how to identify, how to go about prototyping and coming up with projects to sell. If you want more inspiration, click on this video right here and I will see you in that video.